welcome back to the Budget Gamer channel where we bring you critical and in-depth reviews of just about every indie game we can get our hands on, and today we're going to be taking a look at Little Briar Rose for the Nintendo Switch. And regardless of which type of gamer you are, Little Briar Rose is probably a game that's going to draw you in pretty quickly with its professional voice acting and pretty vivid portrayal of its own story through stained glass imagery. Overall, Little Briar Rose retells the story of Briar Rose from the Grimm's Fairy Tales, which is probably more colloquially known as Sleeping Beauty. And where the story leaves off is where we take over our character, the Dashing Prince, who has to fight his way through an enchanted forest in order to make it up to that inevitable high spire where his Sleeping Beauty lies. Assaulting this enchanted forest, though, is probably not going to be as easy as it might sound because it's been completely overrun by cursed thorns. These thorns divide the forest into four major sections of different villages of creatures and compose the game's four primary levels. Each individual village, whether it's the village of the merpeople or the village of the gnomes, will have a certain task to complete. And to complete this task, you'll need to talk to the village denizens in order to get important information and find certain unique puzzle items. But while this would generally tie Little Briar Rose into the point-and-click genre, there's also a handful of minigames throughout the game that keep it pretty light and diverse. And despite your comfort level with finding puzzle items, navigating through dialogue, or cooking or fishing to figure out how to push the game forward, the developers of Little Briar Rose threw in a healthy support system of hints and helps to make sure that every type of player, regardless of their background, has a way to make it to the end. But after walking around multiple scenes and randomly clicking on items or talking to every single character you can find, even despite this healthy help system, it doesn't mean that you can't make potentially devastating mistakes. At the end of each different level or village area, there's going to be a scenario that you have to act out based on the items and information that you've gained from each of the village tenants. And should you act on false information, or act in a way that doesn't fully achieve that village's expectations, your princely character himself will fall prey to the curse and become no more than a small portion of the fairy tale itself. Thankfully though, you will start off with one of several different princes right at that point with the same items in the inventory at that exact spot in the game. So while there's not really a huge punishment for messing up and just ham-fisting your way through some dialogue, it does account for players just kind of clicking on random options until they get it right. And in all honesty, it does kind of make the game a little more fun, because you actually do need to pay attention. Like I said though, there are only four main levels to the game before you reach that castle, so overall it is pretty short, maybe taking about two, two and a half hours, depending on how thoroughly you explore the game. Thankfully, though, Little Briar Rose is aware of exactly what it is, which is a short and entertaining retelling of a fairy tale. It doesn't take itself seriously, and as soon as you manage to get one of the game's achievements, you'll understand exactly what I mean. There are very few items in the game, and overall it's incredibly minimal, but just like the stained glass representations of the entire game itself, sometimes minimal is really good. The graphics of the game, as I've talked about already a couple times, are one of the game's biggest draws. They are expertly done and very unique just for gaming in general, and are really well complemented by the game's audio. It feels surreal and a little bit fun, and overall just creates a really good and immersive experience for the player. The game's controls are incredibly simple, which means anyone should be able to just dive into the game and make it to the end in record time. The game's individual level areas, such as the village of the dwarves or the merpeople, are also very minimalistic with only three or four characters to talk to in each. So instead of trying to enhance the difficulty of the puzzle by overinflating dialogue, they really do focus on having the player be a little more inventive. And this as well adds to the overall light and somewhat comical air of the game in general. Though all in all, despite Briar Rose being a fairly simple and fairly small 2-2.5 two two hour point and click title with a few mini games, it is definitely an enjoyable experience if any of these related genres are something that you typically enjoy. Some parts in the game, like maybe the maze puzzles, might get a little frustrating at times, but the ending scenes make it well worth it. And if you are a fan of point-and-click adventures, or a fan of simple, somewhat casual short indie games, I would actually encourage you to try this one out, especially while it's on sale. So that does about wrap up the review of Briar Rose now on the Nintendo Switch. But anyway, if you enjoyed the review, or especially if you found it helpful, feel free to throw me a like or a comment to show your support, and don't forget to click that little bell icon when you subscribe to stay updated with the latest content. As you can see from this one, there are new and unique indies coming out literally every single day, so there's always going to be some new game to find out about right here. 
But anyway, this has been Budget Gamers. As always, thanks for watching.